Hello, everyone. Uh, in this short video, I'm going to give you an example of writing triggers in PostgreSQL. Uh, so triggers are, could be a very useful function. Uh, if, for example, if you want to automate a process in your database, a trigger is a great way to capture some of these uh, uh, tasks without having to explicitly write separate uh, routines. Um, so using a simple example here, uh, let's suppose I have uh, these two tables. I have, so this first example, I have um, a customer info. So I have these three customers and I wanna keep track of whenever the city column in the customer table changes. So whenever there's an update in this column, okay, I wanna log those changes. So for example, when ID 321, if this individual moves or their project changes from uh, the current city, um, you know, to another city, I want that updated. So for this particular person, the last city that they were located was in London, and then now they're in Boston. So let's say this changes to something else. Let's say to, you know, there's another record here, like two, three, two, one, and then from Boston, the current city, um, and then this gets changed to, let's say, other in San Francisco, just call it SF. That I want a line that says SF and the current date in here. Okay. Uh, the date will go in here, the current date. Okay. I want this to happen automatically. I want the customer info log to uh, uh, you know, update automatically based on any updates to the customer info table. So how does a how does, how does a, a, a trigger look like? What's the um, what's the structure of it? Um, so you, this is really the function, and then it's a trigger function, right? And then there's this bottom part that you actually declare a create trigger on the bottom. Uh, the key thing to know here is, you know, this bottom part portion here. This really captures when. Okay? When do I want the trigger to go off, right? So this trigger goes off when there's an update on the customer info talk, uh, table. So if there's any update in this table, okay, customer info, then I want this trigger to go off, okay? And it says execute procedure log state change, and this is a procedure up here. So once this goes off, so then this is the what, right? Okay, what does this trigger actually do? Bottom part tells you when, and then the, the top part tells you what, okay? So what does this trigger do when there's an update to the customer info table? We're gonna insert into customer info logs in the second table, and then insert into this table, a new row, uh, a new dot ID, old dot city, new dot city, and current day. So these, all of these references, new, old, new city, et cetera, they are referencing to this table down here, okay? Because you know, this is when the trigger goes off. So when you're saying new and old, it's what are the new and old values from that table you're referencing, okay? But the actual insert occurs on the customer info log table, okay? I hope that's clear. It's, you have to uh, be very cautious here and say, you know, the bottom part is when this trigger goes off and the part, top part is what this trigger actually do does. Let's do a quick example, another example. Let's say I have these two tables. Again, fictitious and kind of very simple, you know, not, not too useful, but hopefully it demonstrates a point here. Um, we have a customer info table. So this, in, in, this shows you the information of certain customers and then a column called last purchase, uh, showing you what they last bought. Let's say that we're running a fictitious coffee shop and we only sell drinks. And, you know, if they bought, if Michael Scott, the last thing he bought was a latte, the last purchase column tells you latte, okay? And then you have a second table called purchases, which are the individual transactions, okay? So uh, these two tables are linked by the ID columns, ID and customer ID. So these two columns are what interlinks these two. It's linked by those two. Um, let's see if we can do it. Might might check real quick. Okay. 
uh, my apologies. So uh, I think my mic dropped for a second. So yeah, the ID column from customer info and the customer ID column in the purchases table, uh, those two are the, the, the keys, right? So they're, they're interlinked by those two keys. It's the primary key in the customer info, the foreign key in the purchases table. So uh, what we want to accomplish here is that let's say we get a brand new row here. We get anything down here. Let's say this new row, um, you know, there was a purchase made by 154. So Michael makes a purchase. And he buys hot cocoa okay, for 325. Uh, once that happens, then I want, I would want this value now to go change from latte to cocoa. Okay, that's what I want happening. Okay, so I want to write a trigger that accomplishes this test. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. So again, we would kind of start with the same structure, right? Uh, the first thing that when this bottom part is when, right? When do I want this trigger to occur? Okay, this bottom part, okay? It's, I wanna create this trigger after insert on the purchases table, right? Okay, once I have a change, uh, once, once I have a new additional row on the purchase table, I want this trigger to go off, okay? And then this, when I write the trigger, this is again the what, right? I wanna update the last purchase column based on the ID, right? Okay. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Okay, so I'm gonna write this trigger and I'm gonna use this format here. So on the left, I have my yard, I'm sorry, the tables. Um, and I'm gonna write out my um, trigger using just Notepad plus plus. And I'll copy this, run this in Postgres and demonstrate uh, whether it works or not. So. Um, let me start with the bottom portion. I want this trigger to go off when there's an insert into purchase table, purchase table, uh, so the bottom table. Okay. So this create trigger, I'll call this trigger update last purchase TRG. Okay. And this trigger occurs after there's an insert um, on purchases, right? On the purchases table. Okay. And then once there's a uh, insert purchase, I'm gonna execute this procedure. I'll call it update last purchases. And this portion should be the name of the function that you create up here. Okay, so I'm gonna copy, and paste it up there. Okay, so this is, um, you know, we create a replace function, update last purchases. You know what, I'll make it singular, that's purchases. Okay, so we'll do one, okay. Return trigger as, and this is where I start writing my trigger. So begin. So uh, this is a what part, what do I want to do? When there's an additional row, there's a new row in purchases, I want to find the matching row based on the ID and replace the uh, last purchase column. So the function I'm going to use here is update, right? Because I'm going to update the customer info table. So it's going to be update, uh, and my table name is customer info, okay? The new value is, I'm gonna set this new value as, um, so the column I'm gonna change is last update, is now new dot item, right? Okay, and just try to be consistent with what you see on the left there. Uh, the item column is down here, right, this item. Remember the new is referencing where like when did, you're looking at this bottom screen, right? When the trigger gets, uh, when the trigger uh, gets, gets triggered, right? When it goes off, right? It's after insert on purchases. So there's a new value in purchase, right? So the new value references this new row that you added to purchases, right? So new the item is referencing this, this part here, Coco, right? Cocoa, right? So that value, okay? Um, and then if it's, uh, make sure it's a, the correct customer. So where my customer info dot ID equals the new row that I added into the purchase table dot cost ID. And that's how I call it. Uh, and return uh, new. And so uh, this should um, update everything. 
Um, so let's give this a try. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to go into Postgres and test this out and make sure everything is working properly. Okay, so I'm going to first create the tables, and then let me try. And at the bottom part, I'm going to try to test out. Okay, so I've, I've let me demonstrate the tables first here. Let me show the tables. So uh, select everything from info. Let's see that first. We have those three customers. And then let's look at uh, select everything from purchases. Let's take a look at that. So I have those three tables right now, right? And they should be matching. Um, and so they should be matching what I had on the slides. Now let's take this and add a new row. So let's create the let's create the trigger. So I'm gonna go to the trigger here. I'm gonna run this script. But this is exactly what I wrote on the other uh, the Notepad plus plus. Um, so I'm gonna run this trigger. Okay, successful. Okay. Now I'm gonna add in a new row here into purchases. So this is a row that I had on the slide. Um, so Michael bought a cup of cocoa, okay? So once I run this, we should see this value, latte change from the current value to this new value cocoa, right? Automatically. So I'm gonna, let's do the insert, oops. Uh, let's see, I made an error here. Column last update does not exist. Last update purchase date. Okay, so there's an error here, right? Let's see what the error is. Let's go up. I think it's a customer. Okay, might be with, I mean, probably made a spelling error somewhere here. Uh, that's something. Uh, let me show the tables here and figure out what the error there is. Okay, so there's the error is really, I just uh, didn't name the columns correctly, right? So in my customer, uh, the customer info table, um, the column is called, I uh, made another mistake here, it's last, misspelled last name. Let me fix those. So that's last name. Um, and, and I call the column last purchase, right? Um, so let me recreate that table. Let me just rerun the whole thing here. I would have to go back and check my trigger to make sure that those Columns are called correctly, the other one as well. Okay, so customer info, the column is called last purchase, and then in purchases, it's uh, the item, right? So the place there's an error is this last purchase. Okay, so in my trigger, let's see. So I call it last update, right? So I should change this to last purchase, right? Okay, so um, now let me drop this trigger. And then um, let me recreate it. Okay, so uh, let me, yeah, let's try that again. So I'm, I'm going to drop this trigger in two ways. You can just go here and just do, do the drop or drop cascade, or I could run this uh, drop uh, drop trigger command. Uh, it should be this trigger name here on the purchases table. Let's try that one more time. Let's try that again. Okay, so it dropped. Okay, I'm not sure, quite sure why it keeps uh, uh, giving me that bug here. That's the trigger function. That still should be there. It's fine. Um, let's uh, rerun this with the. I made this up there, right? From uh, uh, it's the correct uh, column name. So let's rerun this. Okay, and test this out now. So. Um, let's see. So right now my table still only has the three lines. I'm gonna add in this fourth line and then see what happens. So let's add that in there. So if you look on purchases, I have my fourth line. And then hopefully if I look at my customer info, Michael's purchase is now Coco, which it is. Okay, so my trigger is running correctly and it is updating. Uh, so you can you know test this out more and see what happens. But uh, hopefully this this will help you uh, 
you know, figure out some of these, uh, uh, you know, intricate details of triggers, I guess. Um, I think the biggest thing is understanding that the bottom portion is what is when the trigger goes off, okay? And the top portion is what that trigger actually does, okay? Uh, so thanks for watching. Hopefully this is helpful. Take care. Bye.